If you were to buy Kaiba's briefcase in the year of our Lord, 2024, how much is that going to cost you? An arm and a leg? Maybe your soul? And does that value constitute a fair trade for a blue eyes white dragon? Let's settle this once and for all. How are we going to do this? For the most part, we'll be using TCG Player to determine our pricing for each card. And because it's Kaiba, you know the fifth member of the Beatles was only rolling with the most succulent of cards in his briefcase. Mint condition, high rarity, and pricey. So, we have the criteria for what we need to look for, and as a personal addition, I'll only be taking TCG Player verified sellers into account because they tend to be the most reliable pricing. Quick disclaimer, these prices are only accurate as of the time of my research and recording. So in like two weeks when the prices fluctuate and this video is invalid, I'm aware and you don't need to comment. Let's waste some money. Our first card is Skelgon. This card only has one printing. Lucky me. And being from 2014's Astral Pack 5. Which is weird to see from a card that I feel is super old, but I'm probably wrong. Nothing new there. The cheapest I found was a whopping $9.99. Metal Raiders, at least in the real world, makes up a large percentage of Kaiba's briefcase, like over half of the cards. Guilty of the D Knight. <laughs> boy. First edition from Metal Raiders is going to add a less than substantial $2.79 to our total. Maybe it would have been worth a little more if we did this sooner prior to the 25th anniversary releases, but you live and you learn. Punished Eagle sounds like me after a night alone. Fuck yeah. And because Metal Raiders takes up the majority of where these cards come from, unless I specify otherwise, assume the card I'm talking about is first edition Metal Raiders. The Naughty Bird over here is a cheap one, 81 cents. Roaring Ocean Snake. Sounds like me during a night alone. Okay. We're picking it back up a little bit with $2.25. There's nothing inherently interesting about a lot of these aside from being nostalgic cards, but like, no shit, they're in the first episode. Let me speed run a few of these and move this along. Labyrinth Tank, we've got $3.23. Empress Judge, a buck forty-eight. And Block Attack, 60 cents. God bless. Fun fact, it's scientifically proven that your brain causes you to feel more hungry when you can't afford to pay for food. Probably because you're starving. But curry always hits the spot. It's Mullion Curry. The, the next card is Mullion Curry. A bit more interesting with this one, very fitting for Kaiba to have a world championship card in his briefcase. There's actually two printings. And for a rare copy from the 2010 World Championship prize pack, you're looking at $29.95. But, because it's Kaiba, it's the most likely that he was holding the super rare copy from the 2011 World Championship prize pack. For how much? Well, it's probably going to be the most expensive card we have today by a mile. $324.95. But let's get back to the depressing ones. Red Medicine, first edition from Legend of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. $1.40. Remember when you could get a McChicken with that kind of money? Oh, how the times have changed. With the several fusion monsters found in Kaiba's briefcase, it makes sense to see polymerization alongside them. I'm probably being too nitpicky with this one, but I intentionally looked for the matching card art when finding my price. Pretty interesting to find that our best version is from 2011's Dual Terminal 4. That was about the last thing I expected, but here we are. $21.47. Not bad. Back to LOB with Remove Trap. And it was at this point that I came to the realization that Kaiba was absolutely trying to scam this man. The cards in his briefcase was cheeks. Even the championship card. I said what I said. Either way... $2.47. We're almost through the first half of the briefcase with Launcher Spider, yet yeah, it's not looking great for our cause. Launcher Spider absolutely doesn't help us with its $1.72. At least it's better than Block Attack. For the next few entries, we'll be taking a trip to the Sunrise Land, which according to eBay is Germany, Italy, and the UK for some reason. And we're doing this because these entries are still exclusive to the OCG and won't be found on TCG Player. 
What I found to be the easiest way of gauging a market price, so to speak, was to take an average of as many listings for each card that I could find. The first OCG exclusive, and I may be insane, but the card next to Launcher Spider is 100%, and you cannot change my mind, is freaking Bolt S Cargo. Again, Kaiba was holding on to some hot ass. But the OCG cards overall give us a lot more bang for our buck, so we can't complain too much. $7.32. Let's do another rapid fire. Cyber Soldier, Blue Ball Incarnate, $7.89. Monstrous Bird, $13.96. Boulder Tortoise, $14.64. Sea King Dragon, What is that? $12. And Togex, $10.33. Let's head back home to Metal Raiders, because where else would we go? Flame Cerebrus? It's not Cerberus. We're also back to poverty with the dollar seventy-two. Millennium Golem is another card with only one printing, that being in 2005's Tournament Pack 7. Which messes with my head because I would have bet my left nut that it was also in Metal Raiders. Guess I'm down a nut. B Dragon Jungle King because Konami of Japan wasn't about to take any chances with being labeled as racist. We're back in the motherland, so we've also got better pricing with $7.95. Air Eater is a card that legitimately makes me believe in the Mandela effect. I would have bet my right nut that I had this card in English when I was younger. I couldn't tell you what set it was from, but that reality doesn't exist anymore, I guess. Maybe I'm misremembering from a video game, but needless to say, I'm nutless. Also, the card goes for an average of $11.62. And our last two cards take us out on a whimper. Battle Steer for $0.74 cents and Anthrosaurus, which was only printed in Legendary Collection Joey's World because every player and their mother was clamoring for a TCG print of that card, I, I guess. $0.75, cents, baby. Okay, Mrs. Puff, what's my final score? Six. I can tell you without even doing the math, that Kaiba was on some BS with that briefcase. Our final total for Kaiba's briefcase can be definitively valued as of 2024 at $466.03. Oh, bitch, tight B. Okay, that's not awful, but one card was definitely doing some heavy lifting. But with all of that said, does that value constitute a fair trade for a blue eyes white dragon? The question we proposed in the beginning of the video. When I originally came up with this idea, our goal was to match with a first edition near mint blue eyes white dragon from starter deck Kaiba. Well, we're over $300 short. So there's that. What could we buy with our newfound riches? If we have no shame, we can buy an unlimited version. Heck, we can even buy four so we have one to rip in front of an old man and send him into cardiac arrest, if we so choose. We can basically buy any version except for the one that we set out for. Except for the Dark Duel Stories promo, we're about a thousand dollars off from that one. What do we learn from all this? I learned that Kaiba was built different. Not better, just different. And he was also 100% a con artist. But that's going to do it for today's discussion, guys. A little bit of a fun one that I've had in my mind for a little bit that I wanted to try out. So let me know what you think. Drop a comment down below. Let me know. And if you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's always greatly appreciated, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. Signing off.